As investors hunt for yield, a somewhat surprising segment of the ETF market is beginning to become popular. Joining us now for more and some, some of the other trends we're seeing in the space, Andres Rincon, Head of ETF Sales and Strategy at TD Securities. Andres, great to have you on the program for the first time. Before we get into that conversation about the trends, uh, tell me what your team does. Thank you for having me, for starters. Um, so I head the ETF Sales and Strategy at TD Securities, and uh, I overview a, a group of traders and also sales uh, at TD when it comes to ETF specifically. In short, what we do is we're liquidity providers of ETFs. And um, some of you might wonder what that is exactly, but we're, we're the ones that make sure that the, the market function. We come in every day and we make markets on over a thousand ETFs uh, on a daily basis. And uh, this goes across a variety of, of asset classes and regions and whatnot. So uh, we're very active and all our traders sit in front of that screen all day making sure that we make markets on, on uh, the ETFs in Canada. So we're really a technology business in making sure that there's a bid and ask out there every single day. If I had to put it into perspective, let me, let me step back for a second. ETFs, the word ETFs. So the key word here is exchange. Mm -hmm. So it trades on an exchange. And how does it trade in an exchange? You need actually liquidity providers. You need somebody to put a bid and an ask on the board and we're the ones doing that to a degree. So when uh, you as an investor go and buy or sell an ETF, you're interacting with either a, another buyer or seller or you're interacting with a market maker. And that's uh, in, in essence what we do. We provide bids and asks on the board on many, many different ETFs um, across a variety of issuers and regions and whatnot. Another big area or another big um, responsibility of our desk is actually to create and redeem on the fund. If you look at the mutual fund space, generally there's only two participants. There's the buyer or seller and there's the fund. In the ETF world, there's actually a third participant, which is us, the AP, the approved participant. And our job, once again, is to make markets. And as we accumulate positions in these ETFs, we create and redeem in the fund. And we are the only ones that are allowed to do that um, in the market. And for, on behalf of TD, we are the main market maker of, of ETFs. And we're considered the, the product experts when it comes to ETFs. I was going to uh, say, in that market-making role, you're seeing the trends as they pass by your screen. You said you got those eyes on it. So let's talk about some of those trends as a market maker. The hunt for yield. Obviously, people are looking at yield in a different way now that they have in years. What does that mean for the ETFs? Look, we've seen uh, incredible growth in, in our space over the last few years, and, and yield has been one of the key areas. But I also wanted to touch on a couple of the other trends that we're, we're seeing in our space. Uh, number one, the majority of our flow is still in passive world, as you can imagine. ETFs, that's kind of the baby of, uh, of ETFs. We're seeing a lot of money going into, into passive ETFs. But now we're also seeing a lot of money going to asset allocation ETFs, covered call ETFs so on, on the topic of yield, and also fixed income which is also another uh, yield-centric product. In asset allocation, it is one of the main um, areas for ETFs. And th these are relatively new ETFs. They launched call it um, five years ago or so, um, but they're seeing a ton of flow from, from advisors, they're seeing a ton of flow from mom and pop on the direct investing side. So it's a fastly growing area. And these ETS, what they do is really, is they, hold, they build an entire portfolio for you. So it's a one-stop shop investing for you, for you as an investor. So you have your, let's say you can have your 60-40 or conservative growth, uh, the, whole, the whole spectrum you can have it in ETF form. These are very, very popular. Now, you can also have cover call ETFs and, and, or any yield-centric ETFs, and this is, these are very, very popular. We were talking earlier how a big part of the ETF space is now yield-focused, especially for the direct investor. Uh, so cover calls is, is, is a great example of that. That's just uh, long a call, sorry, long a stock and short a call. But you also have boosted ETFs, which are very new in, in, in Canada. These are ETFs that give you a uh, little bit of leverage, very, very small, and, do, and in some cases they also do cover calls on those ETFs. Um, these have become very popular because of their yield, sometimes 10%, 13%, that's very attractive uh, to a lot of the investors. And we even have some new products called yield shares, which are doing the same thing, but in a single stock, like an Amazon or, or, or an Apple, let's say. Um, so these are really fascinating products that we're seeing here in Canada. And obviously you have fixed income. Yeah, how is Canada different than the U.S., right? Because in ways, I feel like we, perhaps we have a bit of a different market than they do. Yeah, so relatively similar across the board in terms of coverage of the space. 
But we have a couple areas that are really interesting. Number one, cover call, we were mentioning um, this about 5% of all the market in Canada and the US is just 0.5, so it's t tiny in the US. Actually, we're, we're almost the same size as the US and that's really uh, fascinating how big it is in Canada. Um, crypto ETFs, we have physically backed crypto ETFs, which we don't have in the US and you do have in Canada. Yield shares, I mentioned, is a new product that's only available here in Canada. But also a couple of different nooks here and there. You have like actively managed ETFs are on 25% of the market in Canada. In the US, it's a very small portion, let's say. I think also so is interesting is because we're in Canada, we're not in the US, US dollar based or hedged products are also very big in Canada. Um, I was going to ask you, I know that amid all these sh very fascinating trends and everything that's happening, you've actually launched a new show. I think it's called Buy Side Views. You want to show the audience uh, a little clip of it and I'll come out and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more of the show. Let's show, show the audience. We think that the role of the financial advisor is only going to increase from here. Mm -hmm. and, and it's especially true for more affluent investors. I think that... Um, the financial advice is not going to get commoditized or robo, robotized, yeah, right? Enough. So, and, and from that perspective, um, we see a lot of, of potential there. And and again, a bit of similar to what we did in Canada is is the scale we can get. So, so you start with a series of independent, sizable RIAs, but if you make them work together, the scale you have is better on a lot of fronts in terms of cross cross sectional functions, but also in the way that you can approach external managers and get better terms. All right, Andre, so there you are in the anchor chair, the one asking the questions. That conversation is a bit about, you know, the future of advice, considering, you know, robo-advisors, all this chat about artificial intelligence. Uh, what kind of other things can people expect from the show? Basically, we're giving our, our clients, our institutional clients, access um, to the different clients that we have here at TD. And we're allowing them to showcase their expertise and, and trends in the market. So we're going to see a lot more of that going forward. In this first case, we had... Um, CI Gam, the CIO, which is Mike Andre Lewis. So we're excited to to see more of that. And these are these are publicly available, so you can have it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and also Spotify. So we're really looking forward to that one. 